Welcome, everyone, to Metro New York National Black MBA's Business Symposium. Uh, my name is George Santius. I am the VP of Administration for the chapter. Uh, we are very, very excited uh, to have you join our discussion today. Um, and we have some very special guest speakers uh, on the call. Again, my name is George Santius. Uh, I am owner and operator of a NYC MBA certified uh, insurance agency that operates in um, New York City, New York State, Connecticut, uh, and New Jersey. Uh, but we also have a uh, national presence as well, um, depending on the need. Uh, we specialize in, in, our, in small to mid-sized businesses in, in um, insurance policies. Um, we specialize in accident health uh, cover, uh, coverage and loss an analysis, employee benefits, loss controls, property and casualty co coverage, of course, and surety bonding for small to mid-sized businesses. However, however, we also work with a lot of uh, municipalities uh, in, 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 the, in, in these capacities in terms of you know, ensuring that they managing risk uh, for their uh, uh, citizens uh, as best as possible. Uh, today, we have two very special guest speakers uh, as part of this discussion of uh, not only insurance, but also financial management, right? Um, our, our guest speakers is Josue Rivera of Rivera Montes C CPA PLLC. And we also have uh, as a guest speaker, his partner, uh, Javier Montes CPA, uh, partner of Rivera Montes CPA. Welcome gentlemen. Thank Good morning, George. All right, all right. So uh, first, let's let's focus on Josue Rivera. Uh, Josue Rivera has over 22 years of professional experience, uh, 19 of it, them in domestic and international tax services at PwC, which, by the way, I am a uh, alumni of PwC as well. Um, great, great organization. Uh, his expertise spans across multinational companies, large compliance engagements, and large family-owned businesses. Uh, he's, he has successfully managed uh, large family owned businesses from soup to nuts, including providing advice on their corporate tax planning, financial wealth, uh, individual tax requirements uh, as well. Uh, currently, Jose is a tax and business advisory partner with Rivera Montes CPA, uh, advising small and mid-sized uh, businesses with their accounting, business, tax strategy, and implementation. All right, uh, now let's switch over to Javier Montes CPA, partner of Rivera Montes CPA. Javier has, has 15 years of experience in assur insurance and advisory services. He has worked for a number of small and mid sized uh, companies and nonprofit uh, uh, organizations, providing accounting, financial uh, reporting advice uh, as well. Javier has extensive experience working on complex ac uh, accounting matters within. Uh, the financial industry, uh, including recognize, recognizing uh, with recognition, sorry, with U.S. GAAP um, and IFRS accounting framework. Uh, he has also worked with numerous multinational companies in technology manufacturing space. Uh, Javier is a licensed is a CPA in the state of New York and Puerto Rico, uh, as well as number of American institutions uh, institutes of. Uh, of, of within New York City and state. Uh, Javier also actively participates in NY chapter of Alpha, a great organization where we, uh, we at the Black MBA Metro New York chapter have had a great relationship with Alpha as well. So again, guys, uh, welcome. Uh, and you have a, some amazing backgrounds. Um, it, was, it has been a pleasure getting to know you guys for the past three and a half years uh, in, in, in my, uh, in my a career as a uh, insurance expert in New York State. Um, so excited to hear your presentation. Uh, but we'll, we're at, at this moment, we'll move on to uh, presenting my presentation, um, and then we'll get to you guys. Okay. Sure. Uh, to start this conversation, I just want uh, us to understand what is uh, business insurance, right? Business insurance is coverage that protects your small business. Uh, small to mid-sized businesses uh, and, and, and established businesses from financial damages that can result from property damage, accident, professional error, workers' compensation claims, and loss of key employees and other situations. 
Um, having accurate coverage is critical in minimizing the negative impacts of claims against your business. So ideally, it's just a transfer of uh, your business risk from uh, from yourself to an insurance agency. You know, as the CEO, uh, you really just want to make sure you focus on building your business as opposed to um, things that uh, that relate to business risk. So you know, me as an insurance expert, um, I help you understand those risks and then transfer those risks to uh, an insurance organization. All right. Um, so uh, the, the primary types of business insurance, um, you know, we all need to ensure that we understand is uh, uh, general liability, workers' compensation, professional liability, uh, commercial property liability, uh, commercial auto, if you have an auto um, that you utilize for your business, and key person life insurance policy. These are the, the, the primary ones that, uh, you know, every business owner should, should at least have an understanding on. Although in this conversation, we'll focus on um, some specific ones that uh, relate to um, the current times that we're in and helping folks navigate uh, that business risk uh, to uh, the insurance organizations. But uh, let's just understand the three core ones. Um, first and foremost, let's understand that uh, general liability, uh, which is the most common type of uh, business insurance, uh, uh, covers the, the basic needs uh, that are shared among all types of companies, right? So th think of things like a slip and fall incident, Think of things that, like, if your if your business, um, uh, God forbid, goes under fire, and the neighbor's business next door uh, goes under fire uh, under fire as a result of uh, your business activities. Uh, that's when your general liability policy would kick in to cover uh, claims that the your neighbor makes against you. All right, and uh, let's move on to workers' compensation now. So, workers' compensation um, is a mandatory coverage uh, in New York State uh, and many other. Uh, uh, states in uh, United States uh, where if you have an employee, you need to uh, secure workers' compensation. But we must understand that workers' compensation is a two-part uh, uh, sort of um, uh, policy that you need to consider, right? You have your workers' compensation and you have your disability. Uh, in New York State, you require both workers' compensation and disability. They're two different policies, but pretty much they cover the same sort of idea, which is they cover and protect your interests of your employees. Uh, if they are injured on the job um, uh, or it, or on the way to the job too, you know, there's, there's some there's some very interesting claims that uh, we've seen uh, where you know employees got hurt on their way to their job. So um, you know we could have, we could debate all about that, uh, but uh, you know I definitely want to make sure that we get to the core of all the coverages. And then finally, your, your third coverage that we just want to highlight before we get into the some of the the, the, the the three other uh, optional coverages that we also want to consider. Let's talk about professional liability, right? Um, so professional liability, also known as error and omissions insurance. Uh, this policy is meant to protect uh, professionals in the workplace, right? Uh, expert advice given to clients by you or your employees may not always lead to the desired result. We, 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 we as professionals want to make sure that we, uh, of course, advertise, um, advising our clients correctly, but, you know, every, you know, you know, every now and then you have situations where maybe the world, maybe, you know, instead of a zero in, 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 in a document, there's, there's, there's no zero. And, you know, that, that creates a whole uh, situation with the client. And, you know, obviously um, that, that could potentially lead to a um, professional liability claim. You want to make sure you understand that professional liability is what would kick in to help you protect those sort of expert advice, those um, those errors and omissions uh, that uh, happen in, in your, your you do you be you in the act of you doing your business, okay. So again, the three core ones that uh, every business owner needs to consider, um, depending on their industry, is uh, well, depending on their situation, is uh, general liability. You have your workers' compensation and you have your professional liability. Okay. Uh, moving forward, uh, we have we have five other. Uh, Types of business insurance that uh, folks, you know, you know, may also need to consider based on their businesses. Um, you know, we have a product liability insurance um, that folks also need to consider based on if they're producing products that uh, folks are consuming and you know folks are using. Okay, uh, auto commercial property, uh, which we spoke about earlier, uh, business interruption insurance, which is a very hot topic right now, and I'll get a little bit into it a little later. Uh, and then home-based insurance is if, you know, you have a, a, a business that's established that is operating from your home or it was operating in a brick and mortar situation, uh, a standalone brick and mortar situation, but it got converted to a home-based business. So you need to consider, you need to understand 
um, home-based insurance needs um, regarding those op- those other types of business insurance. And then finally, um, something that's very, very important right now as folks uh, move into a, a more virtual environment is your cyber li- liability and data breach insurance. Uh, I just want to quickly um, focus on the, the latter three, um, your business interruption insurance, your home-based insurance, and your cyber liability data breach insurance. Because of the the new sort of world that we're getting into, uh, folks need to um, sort of understand um, what these these things in, in, uh, entail. Okay. All right. So, business interruption insurance. Uh, it's, it's also known as business income insurance. It compensates your business uh, a percentage of lost revenues in the case of catastrophic or, or, and business shutdown. Right. Uh, so it's added to a something called a BOP uh, policy. Um, a BOP policy, B-O-P, uh, it stands for Business Owners Policy. Um, this is a, a customized package policy specifically tailored to your type of business. Uh, and then uh, from there, you could sort of add different optional coverages. So a business interruption insurance policy would be sort of that added coverage to a BOP, a BOP policy. So uh, it covers business loss. Uh, it covers business income loss, um, and th- these three things have to happen. Um, business operations are suspended uh, due to direct physical loss of property and off-premises. Uh, that 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 is a very important uh, aspect of a bit of a BOP policy: direct physical loss. All right, uh, and then third, resulting from covered cause of loss. So, uh, so all three of these requirements uh, must be met for business uh, income coverage to apply, and mu- and and most policies carry the usual. A disease exclusion, all right? So, you know, I get a lot of questions. Hey, George, um, you know, is the coronavirus situation covered? Um, and unfortunately, um, the answer is no. And when it, when it comes to business income, when, when it comes to standard insurance policies, um, viral uh, uh, disease-related uh, pandemics are excluded. Uh, and these exclusions really derive from the, 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 the whole SARS and swine flu and Ebola virus epidemic that we've seen. Uh, insurance companies um, you know, started including those exclusions in, in, in their pots in their standard business insurance policies uh, because two reasons. One is, uh, you know, when we look at uh, cover, coverage lo- uh, covered losses, uh, insurance companies tend to understand the loss in, in, in terms of how long it, it, it will take to resolve the loss and also what geographical location um, these losses are uh, associated with, right? So they have those two understandings already when they come when it comes to pricing a risk, right? Because they don't necessarily have those two things un- understood for a, a pandemic uh, such as the coronavirus. Um, uh, you know, there is no end date uh, or there is no geographic location that these things are combined are, are co- confined to. Um, you know, this exclusion is implemented instead. In, in, in standard insurance policies, because of those uh, those two main factors, there's other several other factors that are much more complicated that we could get into. Um, but you know, feel free to call me, uh, in which we'll, we'll get my contact information for you guys. Uh, but for the most part, un- please understand that, folks. Okay. Uh, and, and as far as business interruption insurance, um, we there is optional coverages uh, that I just want to quickly mention. Um, that you could add, you know, with your your business interruption insurance. Um, one of them is off, off-premises utility service coverage. And second is off-premises operation coverage. Third is cloud service interruption coverage. And then fourth is key personnel coverage. Um, all of these optional coverages um, will just help you sort of operate your business if you have a, a situation where um, your business is being operated outside of your brick and mortar or outside of your home. So you want to make sure you understand that. And then. Uh, Quickly, I want to mention uh, your home-based insurance policies. Uh, understand that uh, you know, as a homeowner, um, and of course you have homeowners insurance. Um, uh, there is many gaps in terms of what the homeowner insurance could cover as it relates to you, you operating your business at your home. Um, so you, you you want to make sure that from a, a business liability perspective, if you have business pr- pr- property um, associated with your business, uh, you want to make sure that's covered um, uh, with a home-based insurance policy because. Uh, ideally, uh, in certain instances, um, depending on the type of equipment, uh, there is not no coverage on your, your your regular home insurance policy, homeowners insurance policy. So you want to make sure and understand that gap. And also, from a, a data breach perspective uh, and a loss of business income perspective, um, a homeowners insurance policy doesn't cover that. So you need to get a 
home-based insurance, a uh, business insurance policy for your um, uh, small to mid-sized operating business. Okay. Uh, and then finally, uh, I want to just quickly mention uh, and, and discuss the cyber liability and data breach insurance. Um, these insurance policies cover some of the damages in the event that your customer's digital data is breached or stolen. Uh, so let me give you an example. Uh, a laptop with patient's medical history gets lost, right? Big data breach situation. Um, you may, you got you to make sure you have a data, data liability and data breach insurance policy uh, for that situation. Another example. A uh, client's social security number is mistakenly emailed uh, to the wrong person by an employee. Um, big data issue, the da data breach situation that you got to make sure that you have cyber liability and data breach insurance. Okay, uh, so those are the two examples. And what does the cyber liability and data breach insurance um, cover? Right, it, it covers notification expenses, right, good faith advertising, credit monitoring services, all of these sort of services, and and much more. But all of these services sort of uh, are things that uh, you need to implement once a data breach happens and um, the, the, the an effective uh, a data breach and cyber liability insurance policy would help you sort of pay for those expenses. You're talking about uh, for every one account, you're talking about hundreds of, uh, hundreds of dollars for every one account that's breached. So imagine if you have a, a, a database of a thousand uh, clients, um, personal identifier information, uh, identifiable information is, is, is breached. Uh, you're you're in a big big situation in terms of not only uh, potentially um, getting sued by your clients, but also um, fines levied by the government or authority. So you're talking about a hundred thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars of fine um, levied by uh, uh, the authorities uh, in, in regards to a data breach situation. So making sure that you uh, have a cyber liability liability and data breach insurance policy is very very important. Okay. Uh, so, uh, in closing, uh, I also want to mention that uh, as a small business, uh, especially we, we, we see it here um, and we hear about it a lot, uh, if you have a partnership uh, with an, an individual as a business owner, you want to make sure that you have your succession plan in place uh, as, in terms of if something happens to that partner, what happens to the business or his business interests, right? Um, so one of the things that you may, may perhaps want to include in your, um, succession planning is a, a key man life insurance policy, um, which allows you to, which, which allows the business to sort of, um, mitigate the, the loss of this key, the key person from your business in terms of income, uh, in terms of, uh, buybacks agreements, in terms of, you know, uh, the family coming in and making a claim, uh, to the stake of the, the, the partner. So you want to make sure that, uh, as a partnership, you have those uh, the key man life insurance policy in place uh, to allow you to sort of talk about to allow you to sort of navigate the uh, the risk of uh, partnership a partner losing uh, another partner of the organization and not able to operate their business because of that, uh, uh, that significant loss. Um, That's all I have for now. Uh, now let's uh, move on to our other half of the discussion. Uh, in, uh, the, you know, the, the, the business uh, risk associated with operating businesses and also the financial management piece of operating uh, uh, your business. So uh, I want to move the conversation now to our experts in uh, financial management planning for small and, 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 and mid-sized businesses and, and, and businesses that are operating right now, especially operating at these times. So, Jose and uh, Javier, the floor is yours. Thanks. Uh, thanks, uh, uh, George. Um, yes, as George alluded to, we are a CPA firm, certified public accountants, but most, most importantly, we are business advisors, which has been stressed in this uh, situation that everyone has uh, been a part of the COVID-19 pandemic and the, the resulting um, 
quarantine where everyone has been on a lockdown. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to turn the floor soon to Javier, but I just wanted to uh, make the, the intro that it's been a very challenging time for every, uh, every uh, uh, business owner. Most of them has been a, a strike uh, very hard by a, cr a crisis in a cash crisis uh, situation where all of a sudden their cash is just uh, not coming in. And, and, and uh, we've been, we were quickly to react and be available to our clients, uh, be available for them for everyday, everyday consultations. Whereas, uh, who do I pay? Who, what vendors I need to, should I shut down and, and start asking for, uh, payment plans? Uh, how do I manage my cash and whatnot? And, and, and I think that that's where we've been, uh, very useful to our clients because we can do the accounting and the taxes and everything else. But I think that now, it's been a great time for us to separate ourselves and be really business advisors to our clients and help them what they really needed the most. Javier, I'm going to turn it over to you so that you can continue the conversation. Sure. Um, so first of all, I just wanted to thank all of you guys for participating, uh, and allowing us to um, share our um, thoughtful um, about how to manage a business during these days, as also I was mentioning, you know, I think that we are on in unprecedented times, um, you know, lockdown, working from home. Uh, a lot of business have been shut down for, you know, for a couple of weeks now. Um, but now I think that a lot of business needs to start focusing on what are the priorities. Uh, first and foremost, it's about their employees. Um, and uh, if they start those business that are going to start to open in those um, cities where um, their um, start um, reopening, I think that they need to focus on how can I bring my employees back uh, on a safety way. I think that business needs to follow their guidelines that the local authority have established about um, opening the business. Um, I know that, you know, every local authority have their own guidelines um, and I will just encourage everyone to be, to focus on uh, to make sure that you guys provide a safety environment to their um, to their employees and also to the customer so that the customer can feel uh, confident that they can come, you know, and start supporting the business. Um, second, um, speaking from a financial perspective, uh, as I was mentioned, um, I think that the, first and foremost, all every business needs to look at the cash flow. Um, business needs to focus on, okay, what are uh, the cash coming in and do a projection. Uh, we encourage and we work with our clients on a, establishing a 13 weeks cash flow uh, where we focus on, okay, what are um, the, 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 the money that we expect to receive, but also how we can manage our expenses, our working capital um, to make sure that at least you um, you have a plan um, and you and, and, and prime priority to pay first um, those, uh, you know, your employees and those critical uh, vendors that are providing your, your service. Uh, so we encourage everyone to really um, pay attention to the cash flow um, to be able to manage their um, their operations and be able to get to the uh, to the other side. Um, you know when all these um, are able to to leave behind. Um, and in addition, we are working with um, clients on looking into the federal opportunities. Uh, uh, that the federal government have established. Um, I think that one of the main programs have been the PPP, uh, pay, Paycheck Protection uh, uh, Program, um, where it has been, in my opinion, uh, working with our clients, a good source of liquidity uh, with the client, our client have tapped into it um, to be able to provide a short-term uh, liquidity to be able to manage during this time frame. Um, now we are all working on K how we can make sure and how can we work out with our advisor to uh, maximize the amount of loan forgiveness because that's where really, um, you know, everyone should be focused on, you know, this is a, a great liquidity tools, uh, liquidity resource for all the business or now how we can maximize and make sure that we, you know, you plan to minimize the amount that you had to, um, to, to repay. Um, I think that the government has been very proactive um, uh, in trying to help the business. There have been a lot of uh, business advisors trying to, um, to request changes and uh, asking the government, you know, the SBA, the Treasury, and other authorities involved to uh, provide more guidance and to read each the rules um, and guidelines to be able to provide it the business with more flexibility on how to use their funds. Um, so I would just encourage everyone um, that, uh, that participate that if you have not um, looked into the PPP, 
um, to work with your advisor and um, apply for the funds. There is, I think that the funds have not, on the second tranche, have not been uh, fully depleted. Uh, so there are some funds available. And then for those ones that have um, received the funds, just to work with your business advisor to make sure that they can uh, maximize the amount of the loan that would be forgiven during this time. Yes, um, uh, that was. Uh, I agree with Javier. I think it's a, a time to work as a team. Uh, you no, business owner needs to surround themselves with uh, trusted advisors, and that's what we achieve or we strive to do. Uh, Javier and I with our clients, and be be work close with your business advisors. Look at the news because, as as Javier said. Things are moving constantly. It's a, a changing situation, an ever-evolving situation. And even even if you got those PPP loans, you might have other other alternatives as to how I uh, use the money and maximize the loan forgiveness. Um, and I wanted to expand uh, just to to say uh, to say out loud our what are our business offerings uh, in, at Rivera Montes. Um, we are a, a certified public accounting firm where we uh, you help the small and medium-sized businesses achieve their financial goals. We do traditional accounting where we do the uh, bookkeeping of our clients and uh, in, uh, in, in tied up to preparing their tax returns and helping with their tax strategy and help them with uh, you know, their, their tax uh, structuring so that in order that they can maximize the, uh, the tax savings. We also do uh, attestation services where we do audit uh, reviews and compilation of financial statements where if you have a, a bank or or someone that is requesting you uh, a, a financial statement where you need an opinion on, on an accountant that they're materially um, correct for purposes of, of for financial statement purposes we do that kind of, of services too and because of our backgrounds in the big firms we do uh, uh, offer other sophisticated uh, services for larger organizations where we can do uh, uh, quality of earnings analysis financial due diligence for uh, merger acquisition transactions where if you're a company that wants to acquire another company we will go in and help you with that kind of work where we will review the the earnings of the other company among other things so that to make sure that when you do that big investment i made that acquisition you do it as uh, with the, with all the information at your hands so that you can make the most accurate decision we also help on the other side of the of the of the realm where if you want to sell your business we can help you set up um the transactions so that you can maximize the value that you get for your company um we also do other uh complicated transactions where if you have a foreign company that wants to do business in the u.s we can help them uh do the tax structuring work so, uh, likewise if you are a, a successful uh inbound company or u.s company that wants to invest offshore we also help those companies uh to do those uh transactions and investment uh, uh so that they can take the the maximum tax uh, advantages that they can and we also do uh uh, as Javier alluded to, the financial cash flow, more of that uh, so chief financial officer role where we can uh, outsource that that um, function for your company and we could do it uh, on behalf of the company. So th those are just uh, 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 some of the of the services that we that we uh, provide here at Rivera Montes. And we want to make sure that we uh, share that with the, with the audience. Yes. Uh and I could I could attest that um, Jose and Javier have uh, have assisted many of my uh, clients. Uh, we've passed many business amongst each other, um, and they have assisted many of my clients to reach their financial goals. Right. Um, so as we we, we talk about uh, your financial readiness, um, your business and insurance risk management, um, one of the things I'm not sure if you guys get this question a lot, Jose, is okay now. In the future, uh, if something like this uh, were to happen, is there some sort of policy to protect us in terms of business income? Right, uh, as you know, as I mentioned about my business uh, interruption insurance, COVID nineteen is excluded. Have you got that in any of those questions, guys? <laughs> many, many of those questions. Uh, if uh, for first questions that I, me myself have, and most of my clients have, hey. Uh, is this is this uh, covering my business interruption insurance? So I'll let you handle that question, George. <laughs> All right. So so yes, there is something called a uh, a pandemic insurance policy, right? 
Um, we have we have seen many of our your, the entertainment industries, um, the uh, uh, you know travel, hospitality industries, hotels have taken advantage of this sort of pandemic insurance, and it's, uh, it operates more like a security product uh, that says if you sort of dip under a certain uh, amount of month income um, for your business based on some sort of uh, a pandemic situation, um, then a, a certain amount would be would, would kick in. Um, however, uh, you know, that's, like I said, more of like a security problem, a security uh, sort of uh, uh, policy. So uh, there is things specifically made that, that would have, have, have assisted for business owners specifically on this COVID-19. Um, I know Marsh has a, had a policy called the Pathogen and RX, which allowed, which, which is a, a policy that had a predetermined payout to the event of a pandemic. Uh, at, at, at COVID-19 wasn't excluded uh, on this. It was included. It was you know, sort of, um, you know, not necessarily mentioned, but it was it, 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 it was along the, the, the um, cause of loss that were included in terms of covering uh, for the, for this specific loss. But unfortunately, uh, Jose and Javier, uh, uh, business owners did not take advantage of it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it, it now um, a lot of people are coming up to me and asking me for uh, this sort of coverage. And unfortunately, most insurance cover uh, companies have, uh, you know, sort of excluded COVID-19 from the specific coverage. However, there is, um, uh, and, and currently there is certain um, uh, 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 carriers that offer uh, a, a pandemic insurance that would, would sort of cover future claims relating to, uh, uh, you know, pand um, pand viral pandemic related uh, issues. Of course, they'll be very expensive uh, mm -hmm. as, as, you know, COVID-19 is, is, is on the front, is, is in, in, in headlines. So yes, so you, you, there is this coverage in in, in place uh, uh, that folks could take advantage of uh, for future uh, risk. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, who who would have thought about that? You need an insurance or something like this. I mean, I think even right. my parents have said that not even in their lifetimes they've seen anything like this. Right, right, right. Um, one of the things I, I kind of want to highlight is as you as you mentioned, you talked about the. Um, PPP uh, in terms of getting that uh, waived uh, portion of that waived for uh, expenses related to uh, payroll and, and some operating uh, expenses. Um, one of the things I want to highlight is: uh, Do you think it, it's it's in uh, a client's best interest to have a separate bank account in, um, for um, depositing of the PPP loan, and then of course paying out paying expenses from the PPP loan just to keep things in track? I mean, you yeah, want to take that one? yeah, I will. I will say that's one of the best practices, uh, George. Mm -hmm. uh, to your point, I think that that will help a lot of a small business to really keep track of how the funds have been used, um, in order to demonstrate, you know, uh, when they when it comes the time to provide the documentation of what were the the the, the, the uses of that fund. So that will help and facilitate a lot of a small business uh, to uh, provide the evidence. Um, or how the funds were used. So, to your point, to answer the answer the, uh, and to answer your question is yes. It will be one of the. It is one of the best practices that we you know talk to our small business um, that they should establish a separate bank account um, and deposit the phone and they use it to um, to to Absolutely. track purposes. So yes. Absolutely. Um, and and you know, a couple more questions. Um, so as it relates to operating businesses, right? Um, we know we know that operating businesses sometime have taken out loans um, prior to th this pandemic ha happen ha has happened. Um, you know, in terms of just sort of, you know, navigating um, their uh, uh, sort of financial, um, uh, the, the, the long-term financial picture in terms of reducing debt, um, what are some strategies that they could take advantage of r right now in terms of just managing that debt as they as they started look as they start looking at more more debt to take on to sort of um, take advantage of the interest rates that uh, that you know the, the very 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 mm -hmm. um, competitive interest rates that's out there. What are some some strategies that you you're seeing folks take advantage of? Well, uh, I will start answering. So, in my uh, po point of view, of my advice to the client is that first and foremost, they should start talking to their bankers. Um, I think that they should have to be working closely with them to try to find an opportunity to say, hey, um, I have all this debt, but now I need more on to add. Um, how can we rearrange, you know, restructure the debt to at least allow me 
to maybe just pay interest now uh, to defer um, some of the uh, principal payment, to defer some of the interest, um, as long as it doesn't provide you know, doesn't increase the leverage to the company. So, um, so you know, that's that's an, an answer that it comes to like working with your banker, working with your accountant, working with all your, you know, the business advisor to really understand, hey, um, the, the, the financial, um, you know, position of the company, uh, the cash flow, and how, you know, if they add more more debt, how they can um, restructure to, you know, to be able to, to, uh, to be, you know, to continue to operate. Absolutely. And, absolutely. and one thing that I wanted to add to that, George, is we have to see our vendors as our partners, right? Because I think that um, um, we are uh, we're all in this together. Um, if we have a vendor, it's because they provide a service to us that we value and we're willing to pay for it. Mm -hmm. And I think that not even us as clients, but even our vendors are going through a very tough time. So I think right. that this is a premier opportunity to reach out to those vendors and right. see, hey, I, I, and, and try to uh, redefine your payment terms. Maybe right. ask for a bit of a discount. Um, who knows what could happen? So I, I would, I would, I would encourage you if you are in a very stripe or very uh, cash position where you really need to conserve cash, but you have a vendor which you really need to keep providing that service. So hey, right. talk to your bankers and talk to those vendors and see if you can get to more favorable payment terms that will help you long term to decrease your 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 leverage in your balance sheet so that you could decrease those debts that are probably um. Uh, eating the those interest payments are eating you out right now. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Um, and also, and this next question is is for you uh, from a, from a tax planning perspective, right? We we know that the the tax laws are are are, are ever changing right now, right? Um, what are some of the concerns that the operating businesses need to consider as we we talk about the twenty twenty ta the the twenty twenty tax filing? Um, around this, 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 you know, some of the funds that's coming in, um, some of the, the, the losses that they could, you know, sort of take advantage of and, and, and you know, tax planning in general for the new um, changing uh, tax laws. Yes. So I want to, I'm going to mention some of the things that has been approved by the CARES Act and others, some, some other things that everyone needs to keep, keep in mind as, as we go through this, because I think that right now, unfortunately, our tax obligation is not going to go away. We still have to pay taxes. So yeah. I, I think that it's going to be how we can manage our cash while still, um, meeting our, mm -hmm. our, our, our obligations to Uncle Sam. Mm -hmm. And I think that first and foremost, we all know that the, the deadlines were automatically extended to July 15th. Right. Mm -hmm. So for most, and those are for calendar year companies, right? Or whatever you have a deadline that, that it falls between April 15 and July 15, everything has been automatically extended to July 15, including exactly. payments. But one thing, so most of our small and medium-sized businesses, what are they? They are what is called flow-through entities, where where it's an S-corporation or a partnership where the entity itself doesn't pay any tax. The owner does, right? right. So I think that this has given owners time to think. What would they like? Because they, they, they already probably extend their, their tax filings for March 15 for their partnership and S-corporations, and those are due in September. So I think they, this gives them additional time to think, what things that I could do to accelerate deductions, right? Because there's some uh, laws out there that will allow you to take some of those losses to a prior year. So how can I do that to accelerate deduction, minimize the amount of income profits that I'll show in my return for 19, for 2019, and then minimize the amount of payment that I could do in July. But you know what? You can even extend July and, and to, to October. So that will give you even more time to think how can you accelerate deductions to the 19th tax year so that you can minimize your tax payments. I think that that's first and foremost, that's what everyone, all, all the small and medium-sized businesses should be considering, meeting with their financial advisor or tax advisors to see how they can achieve that. Plus, um, Again, the, the CARES Act has a lot of tax legislation that was uh, uh, approved. One of the things was they allow NOL carrybacks. So that means that losses that you incurred this year, they will allow you to carry it back to a prior year and obtain a refund of taxes, which is, uh, is this, again, something that is very uh, palatable, very nice. Again, I think that it's a, every business should consider it, should consider it uh, and, and analyze it, but it's on a business by business situation because this, uh, this brings in other complexities complexities that they should keep in mind and and also there were some other um 
individual uh, relief provisions that were approved. One of them was the the, the that they are allowing to tap into the 401k funds or, or IRAs uh, up to $100,000 without the penalties. So I think that, hey, if you're really in a cash start position where you're really needing cash, there's there's an alternative there for you to tap in at least $100,000 of your or your retired savings and without without the 10% penalty. Uh, the caveat to that is that you will have to pay tax on those in the next three years, but at least you have the option. To, to tap into those funds for you, I I will I will be interested to know how much percentage of our clients had those uh, insurance where they uh, were insured by the pandemic, and how much new uh, coverage have you taken from those insurances, like okay. prospectively, because that, that's that's something that I'm curious about. No, it's it's still it's still a very small percentage of, of folks you know that are are, are have sort of took the steps to um, uh, fill out the application to get the pandemic insurance for future risk, right? It's just a small percentage, unfortunately. And all of, a lot of it is really, be, um, you know, when you speak about folks trying to ma minimize as much spin as possible in order to navigate outside of this pandemic. Um, but I'm sure that we'll have, we'll see an increase, right? Uh, and in terms of, uh, for, in my book of business, unfortunately, no um, no client has, has taken advantage of the pandemic uh, <laughs> insurance, right? Uh, overall, it's been a very low percentage prior to the going into um, this pandemic of, of, of actually small to mid-sized to multinational organizations even considering taking this this, 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 this pandemic risk, right? Um, you know, and we all should have learned after the SARS incident, um, even though the SARS incident wasn't that bad, you know, swine flu as well wasn't that bad. Uh, but folks, unfortunately, didn't take advantage of it, um, you know, so uh, and, and then, you know, and I also want to mention this, too. Um, you know, obviously, uh, we are in a very interesting time in terms of just uh, uh, racial equity in this country. And um, we're seeing uh, a lot of businesses go under because of, um, you know, the different things that's going on in different communities. Um, and uh, fortunately, a lot of these business owners will probably never get back up and running because they didn't have. The proper insurance, um, you know, in in, in uh, standard ins uh, insurance policies, you have um, civil disability dis disorders uh, coverage included as a as, as a standard as a standard uh, uh, protection of for issue instances where we that where we see uh, folks rioting, folks uh, folks going into businesses um, and, and 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 you know causing damage. Uh, so it's, it's sad, um, but uh, you know, it, as you talk about um, you know. Looking towards the future, um, we all can't perceive um, what the future looks like, but we all could make steps and plan accordingly from a financial, from a, a business risk perspective to ensure that uh, be, you know, be now and beyond, um, you know, our businesses sustain and, and, and keep operating. You know, and, um, George, I have a quick question. So, um, you know, I, I know that you mentioned that we are, you know, we are still in the, in the pandemic and we are just going to learn about, um, going, you know, how we're going to go forward. But I just, as we work closely with our small, mid-sized clients, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we are in New York City, which is one of the, is not the most, uh, you know, I think that is the most uh, impacted city, not only in the U.S., but in the world. Um, how, what are the, the type of questions that we should be asking um, or what are some of the advice that we should be um, giving our clients from a risk? You know, risk insurance uh, products standpoint, just to going forward. What are the, you know, if you can give us just one or two or three things that we have to, you know, always keep in back of my mind. So when we talk to our client about, you know, mm -hmm. risk, risk insurance. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, uh, first and foremost, first and foremost, every business owner operating a business uh, should at least have a general liability policy, you know. They don't necessarily have to include pr 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 business property on it. Um, they don't necessarily have to include all the other optional coverages, but they should have a general liability policy, right? That's mm -hmm. the first and foremost. And, and you're not talking about an expensive policy. Obviously, you guys know. Yeah. For, for, for the amount, when you're talking about value for money, right? It's a $500 no, uh, insurance policy would cover you up to a million dollars in terms of general liability. You're, not, you're, not, you're talking about a very strong value for money, right? Mm -hmm. First and foremost. And number two. If they, of course, you guys know, if they have uh, employees, right, um, workers' compensation, disability, mandatory, without a question, without a question. And, and then finally, the third the most important one, which, you know, I, I spent some time talking about it earlier, is your cyber liability you know, uh, policy, right? If they're, if they're collecting 
social security card uh, numbers, if they're collecting um, address, names, anything relating to personal identifiable information, they must have a cyber liability, liability policy without a question. So those are the three at least main um, ones that, uh, you know, you know, you should at least mention to your clients if, you know, obviously um, throughout the, the, the course of the financial planning, um, you know, it's, it's ins the insurance line item should be um, part of every business's sort of course of doing business. Right. Um, you know, we've seen, of course, uh, with the, this situation going on that, uh, um, you know, if, uh, you know, especially for the brick and mortar uh, businesses, if they didn't have, uh, if their landlord didn't force them to have insurance on their business, some of them don't have it, right? Um, and I deal with uh, a lot, uh, many, many um, MBEs uh, and, and many organizations just sort of trying to secure uh, municipal contracts. Uh, and, you know, the, the, the uh, municipal, municipalities are very, very savvy risk managers. Uh, and they, they they sort of understand the basic core needs, and you know they, they sort of mandate that uh, folks carry certain a certain level of 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 uh, of, uh, of of policy of, of policy limits and, and also policy types um, when it when they land contracts, and you know, they want to make sure that they secure those. Um, but I you know I also find myself you know making ensuring that I educate my clients to uh, understand other types of businesses around workers' compensation and cyber liability that. They need um, for um, for every uh, for, for d depending on the type of business that they, they operate and depending if, if they have employees. Thank you. All right, all right. So to um, just the uh, uh, closing statements, I'll let you guys go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you, everyone. Uh, again, my name is Josué Rivera from Rivera Montes CPA, a partner. Um, uh, where we uh, you help the small and medium-sized businesses achieve their financial goals. Uh, we thank the MBE for for uh, uh, inviting us uh, into this uh, into this uh, webcast, uh, and we are more than willing to help any of uh, any of you with any questions. Please feel free to reach out. My phone number is six four six nine four five six two five nine six four six nine four five six two five nine, and I'll I'll kick it over to Javier. Um, no, I, I just wanted to say thank you, George, for having us, uh, Norville, and uh, the MPA Association, uh, for giving us the opportunity to share with us. Uh, we felt with all of you our thought or, um, you know, advice on how to manage during these unprecedented times that, like George said, not only from the COVID, but also about, you know, all what's going on, um, on, on, on the Black community these days. And, you know, if you have any question, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, you know, we are here to help all of us. Uh, everyone in the community uh we are um here in new york and you know i think that in order to move forward we we need to help us each other so you know any question please um feel free to reach out i think that the you guys have our bio and you have our email our phone number so um please um don't don't hesitate to reach out thank you so much thank you everyone Well, thank you everyone uh, for joining our uh, financial readiness and insurance presentation um, hosted by the Metro New York National Black MBA Association. It, it has been a pleasure to uh, sort of the, the, the provide you some, uh, some guidance uh, and some expert advice on how to navigate your, um, your, your, your business uh, amongst um, this pandemic and beyond. Uh, if you're a small business owner, your most pressing concern right now at the minute, uh, of course, we understand is how can you ensure that your business will, business will survive during and beyond COVID-19? All right. Uh, how are you going to pay the back rent or the commercial lease uh, you've signed? Right. Who is going to provide the working capital uh, uh, for you right now in order to operate your business? Right. Um, and then finally, where do you find the expertise you'll need to retool your business uh, to cope uh, with the with the current and uh, uh, issues right now and future uh, issues uh, in your business, right? And the the the, the one of the most most amazing organizations in order to help help you navigate these times right now is the Metro New York chapter of National Black MBA Association. Okay, uh, again. Uh, I want to thank you guys for um, giving us some time, your time today, to um, sort of uh, watch uh, this uh, symposium. 
Uh, I look forward to connecting with you all. Um, my name again is George Santias with the Metro New York, uh, New York Black MBA Association, uh, your licensed uh, insurance agent, uh, as well as your business consultant. Um, I look forward to um, you know, continuing the conversation. Uh, you will have my contact and information provided um, you know, uh, shortly. Thank you so much. Thank you.